Hi everyone, this is Margaret Manning with 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. And my guest today is Arian Paul. Arian is a professional makeup artist, a great friend of 60 and Me, and someone who, like me, believes in positive aging. Absolutely. Welcome, Arian. Hi there. I do believe in positive aging. It's the best way. Exactly. And, you know, we actually often ask the community sort of how they describe that they're um, uh, aging. And, of course, everybody has a stereotype that women over 60 should age gracefully. And of course, we always challenge that with no, it should be passionately or creatively Passion or passionately, magnificently <laughs> or boldly. Yeah, I think I, I love all of the words that yeah. you've just used. I think, you know, graciously is fine if that's what you feel like doing. But yeah. passionately, I, I that resonates with me. Very, very much so, yeah. Well, you have a passion for life, and I think a lot of women in our community, that's why they love you so much, Arian, is because you, you know, in your, the products you use that you, that you make and create, you just celebrate that uniqueness in, in crazy, wonderful older women. <laughs> Do you know what? The thing is, when you get older, you don't feel older inside. No, not at all. You still feel <laughs> vibrant and youthful inside. It's just the outer shell that's sort of just, you know, changing a little bit you know exactly. I think the inner the inner the inner self is not changing that much but you know you don't have to be that invisible woman I think a lot of women make themselves mm. invisible by um using neutral and bland and uh, sort of nondescript kind of yes, shades yes um for a couple of reasons perhaps they've gone to a makeup counter where they've been overdone by the makeup artist yeah. and that scares them and hey I've seen things like that happen. So I I can totally identify with that. Totally. It's very scary. You know, you go there and all you think is, where's the bathroom? or Where's the wipe to get this off? I don't want anyone yeah. to see me. So I can identify with that. At the same time, you know, you when I take clients of mine, when I do private one-to-ones, I take them slightly out of their comfort zone, not dramatically, but I give them something that gives them a little bit more oomph. Yes. And I feel that that gives them that, that, that little bit of boldness that you're saying, you know, everyone's definition of bold may be different. It's the same as like when one person's natural look can be somebody else's evening look. So yes. it's, you know, being bold within your own realm. So I think that's a really good thing to highlight, though, that bold can mean from you know, one extreme to the other. And there's a really great quote by um, um, Prada, I think. It's something to do with women when they get older tend to go soft and gentle. But mm. the, the, sometimes the bolder women are more, uh, you know, interesting and, and inter yeah. attractive. So how far, though, do you think we can go? I mean, give us some ideas of things okay. we can do to... There's um, I'll Stretch give you a couple of things that I think that it's a little bit over the top. I think that when you use solid blocks of color on the eyes, I think that's a little bit, it's unforgiving. You can be bold with your eyes. Um, you've done colors like purples on your eyes today. Okay. Um, they look fantastic. They are bold. Your eyes stand out and look beautiful, but they don't look, you know, if you wore a bright lime green, for example, unless that's your real personality, if that's something that that's your signature from whenever and that's what you want to stick with i never tell people that they can't do anything but you know if you're if you're venturing into this looking at ways of incorporating sort of more sort of uh vibrant shades don't go for the, you know the real extremes do softer shades but still with a little bit of punch uh bold lips always look good as we get older believe it or not because most people not every single person so you know out there if you're one of those people that haven't lost the color in their lips lucky you and I, I'm, I'm jealous I um, but most of us do tend to lose the color in our lips so we need a little bit of a bolder color because a beige or a neutrally kind of shade looks like we have no mouth so we need that bit of color one thing that we do need around our eyes is definition okay whether for you, for the some person who's that real makeup phobic person that does not like a lot a soft taupe or a, a, a soft gray may be just enough Perfect. somebody else might be more of a, a forest green a navy blue um, and depending on your skin tone it could even be something like a black depending on your obviously your mm -hmm. skin tone different mm -hmm. skin tones more different shades um, color on the cheeks again those kind of beigey neutrally uh, kind of non-blushery kind of looks mm -hmm. looks fantastic when you're in your teens and 20s and maybe even into your 30s after your 30s, you start to lose pigment in your skin. So those colors can also drain you and make you look washed out. So you need a pop of color. I did a lady's makeup recently, and I just all I changed on her was her blush. We were, It was for a charity event, 
And I looked at her and she said, what would you change? If my, and I said, all I would do is give you some blush. And she went, oh, I never wear blush. So I said, let me just show you. Yeah. And I did a very soft rose pink on her, the apple of her cheeks. Her whole face lit up. Yeah. It was just that just, poof, it was, it was just like a sparkler had gone <laughs> off inside. And yeah. her eyes, she had done beautifully. Her lips had, she had done beautifully. It was just that. So it, it can be just little things like that, that you need to consider. And bold doesn't mean, you know, bright red and bright, bright, bright. It can be more definition. It's a deeper shade. You know, actually, I think you've said something that's really cool. And that is that when you put something on, like even like a sparkly mascara or something just yeah. a little bit crazy and, yeah. and unusual, it changes the way you act. Yes. Like yes. it actually makes you feel, like, you know, like you can maybe go dancing or you can, you know, just try something else that's more adventurous. Well, I'm going to show you. I, I've got this thing called a um, black silver glitter pencil. Uh -huh. And yeah. I love this product and I use it on a lot of women well over 60. Um, and when I first bring it out, they go, oh, Ariane, don't be ridiculous. I'm far too old to wear that. Right. So then I show them what it looks like. So I'll quickly put it on me. I'll just do it. And it's just. We actually did this, as I remember, on the videos that you and I did um, a year ago, and I love this pencil. Yeah. I it's and so look, it's great. It just like it doesn't sparkle. Make you look, it doesn't make you look like you're some kind of teenage disco diva. It actually makes your eyes twinkle a little bit, so you can go up there. If you're somebody that's really thinking, no, do you know what? None of this is for me. Where you can really dip your toe in the water is with your nails i was just gonna say that because your nails are great i'm loving it i got gold on today but, oh um... i love your gold and you can do so many fabulous yeah. things i saw a lady just recently which i actually stopped her she had this sort of teal blue on her nails it's great. and definitely she was in her 60s maybe even actually early 70s yeah. and i stopped her and i said what, what shade is that it looks fantastic it looked amazing it it looked fun but it still looked elegant it wasn't it wasn't yeah. fun you look stupid you look it was fun but wow the way she put it together with what she was wearing it just looked you just it was wow that's all wow and, yeah and sometimes doing something like that gives you a confidence that bubbles yeah. over into other parts of your life and so yeah. have fun